as many of you are aware, I'm not running for Ward 7 school committee uh, this year, and if you're not aware, I wanted to let you know that I wasn't running. I want to thank the citizens of Ward 7 for the opportunity to serve them and for the support that they've given me for the last six years. Um, I want to let you all know that to serve with this committee has been an honor and a privilege. We accomplished a great deal as a school district and as a committee since the start of the receivership six years ago when I came on, and, and of course, we're doing a great deal of work prior to that. Um, but things changed dramatically with receivership, and um, I think together uh, we've aided, in some cases, led significant changes, from increasing matriculation rates achieved through the uh, multiple pathways to graduation, increasing college opportunities through dual enrollment programs, the extension of our Spanish immersion programming to Ian White School and beyond now, um, the addition of pre-K to our elementary schools, uh, the great progress that we've made to building, finally building a new middle school, uh, not to mention the salvaging of two graduation classes, uh, Mildred and uh, Ms. Burks, um, what you did for our graduating classes the last two years was amazing. Um, what everyone's done to navigate a worldwide pandemic's impact on the school district has been uh, really um, fantastic. Uh, and uh, I credit this success to our decision to work with the receivers that have been appointed to these positions instead of uh, campaigning against uh, what was happening. We, we, we were on the way instead of being in the way. And I think all the things that I mentioned above could not have happened without all of our commitment to working with our receivers. Um, Dr. Zreich was in place when I came on board. And he was extremely approachable, and I want to thank him. I don't know that he watches every meeting anymore. No, uh, sure he does. Uh, he all does. the way to uh, <laughs> Anthony does. Soto, and uh, who, this is the closest to local control that we've had in six years, is having our Holyoke uh, at the helm. And I really appreciate you, Anthony, and through all the things that you did. Um, I remember busing problems, et cetera, and you, you helped us navigate through a lot of difficult times. This was a very difficult decision for me. Um, uh, I was approached by uh, someone who had a, was in my, my position years ago with a, a daughter uh, and a son attending the high school, and I thought back to the reasons that I ran uh, so long ago. And uh, I remember um, one particular instance uh, in my first couple of months it, it, on school committee. Um, I was taking my son to the guidance department at Hoyoke High School, and as I walked in, I saw that they had the same exact copier that I just bought for my office, and I was thrilled. I couldn't believe they had a high-speed scanner that could handle 100 pages, and I was like, oh, this is, this is fantastic. And I sat down, and uh, only to find out that um, they hadn't been using that machine for 18 months. It was not connected to the server. And I spent the next two weeks making sure that that happened. And it was a small thing at the time, um, and I felt good about it. As a parent, I saw it, did something about it. Um, but when I see, after six years of being with you all, the gravity of that moment, you know, we had these kids for 13 years possibly, pre-K to 12, and to watch them trip on the way out the door because their guidance counselor couldn't get a scholarship application out or they couldn't get a college application out after all the work that went into it. It really made me think about how important it was to have parents that we have on the school committee that we've had in the past who had children in the school, how important it was to have a balance, and how important it was for me to give somebody else an opportunity. Um, looking back, it's clear to me that um, that uh, that was something that I was able to do as a parent. And I also uh, got involved with uh, the school improvement councils, and that's something that was buried in our in our information tonight. But I noticed that at the close of 2021 school year, Ian White had regularly had their school improvement council meeting. And this year, all principals and face coordinators have been charged with the recruitment and launch of school improvement councils by the end of quarter one. I felt very happy when I read this today, and um, it made me again believe that we had a local person who is hearing what we said, even though we have done everything that I mentioned without casting one binding vote. All that work happened because we were able to work with our receiver, and that's something that I, I look to all of you as having contributed a great deal toward it, and I'm very happy about. Um, when we talk about gaining back local control, and I think about some of the things that came up at this meeting and in past meetings, 
I think it's important that it's not just the state that is in control, and we have to look at all the outside influences that want to tell us what positions to fill, what programs to have. We always have to do what's best for our school district, and I think that we all know what's best. And so I, I, I stand behind decisions that Anthony has made, and I think that we all need to look at the makeup of our schools and how we want to be as inclusive as I think we're becoming as we develop the programming that we're, we're, we're developing. Spanish Immersion is one of my favorite programs because I've lived in the city for 40 years and I've never seen that kind of programming where we don't separate and try to educate everybody twice in different languages, we bring everyone together. And that's what I think this, I think that's what this uh, school committee represents. Um, lastly, I just wanna thank uh, uh, Devin and, and Mildred um, and I only say, Devin, you were the vice chair when I started, and Mildred, you've, you've done an incredible job. Um, I can't imagine being in charge of, of us the way you have been in a more difficult time. We're in receivership, and then a worldwide pandemic, and here you were helping us keep our heads above water, asking all the hard questions, and, um, and, uh, and getting us through. So I thank you for always being here. I thank you for always being prepared and for your professionalism. Uh, you have been wonderful to work with, as have you all. And I, and I, and I have to say, um, I don't want to hear poems from anyone outside the city of Holyoke. I only want to hear roses. Uh, so thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity you gave us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Shane. And you still have the rest of these these months to be with us, mm -hmm. I'll tell you that. I